Hello YouTube, welcome back to DIY Tactical. Today we are starting our three-part series on how to draw the M4 carbine. Now I've done a full video on how to draw the M4 before, but now I'm gonna do a couple shorter video segments on um, just doing it piece by piece in a little bit more detail. So let's jump right into it. Anyway, um, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna start our square shape, right? Um, just like we did in the bigger video, and we're going to come straight across, finding middle. That's about, I mean, that looks fairly square to me. So here, coming straight across, bisecting, and adding our three-chamber um, kind of grid for this, right? And that's what we got, so we're going to bisect this, kind of going just like off our first video, and giving ourselves this little... Um, Kind of like a fourth, kind of a fourth of this first box for that um, portion. Now, um, if, if this would help you, you can add another. It's going to be about the same width as this. We're going to come across the top just like that. And then from here, if you wish, you can just fill out with the circles. Boom. And those are our pins that we're going to be having in this um, in this variation. So now we've got a nice uh, kind of rectangular shape on this side and we are just going to turn that into a square just like this and we're going to bring it across and we're going to get this piece just about as square as we possibly can on this side as well. So yeah now we're, we're starting to get really close to finish with just our guidelines for now at least. So from there, let's go down, let's finish up here. We're gonna come down at a slant for where the grip will be. And I'm actually gonna add, I'm gonna come down here just like this, and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna take from this point, come over to here and make kind of a triangle out of there. From that small little section, I'm actually going to add my slant, just like that. I'm giving myself a little bit of a uh, grip here. and. You can kind of, you know, just kind of guess how big a hand would be going in this. Um, I might have made this one just a tad bit too long. Might want to be somewhere close to that length. Um, something like that. Might look a little bit better. Um, but then one last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take from over here and I'm going to come down just a little ways, probably to about right here somewhere. And then I'm going to draw a line slanted from there to there. Now, I'm actually going to do this with a, a much bolder marker today. Um, and we'll see uh, how it goes. <laughs> so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to outline in these bold. I'm going to get these nice and dark so you can see. And I'm going to take my corner to corner. So, I'll put a dot here and a dot here so you can understand what we're going here. And I'm just gonna curve this, and that's kind of the first part of a receiver. Um, I really like to do that for some reason, it's very aesthetically pleasing to me. Anyway, um, so what we can do is we can take this, just take from your pin, come down here, and go into creating this slant. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna guide us um, to do our trigger right here. This is called the trigger guard, the underside of it. So. We're gonna do that. Um, bring this straight down. Go ahead and follow this curve. And what I like to do is at the very bottom of that, I like to make a little U shape kind of like this and then just gentle, very gentle curve. Um, be very careful with it. Um, bring that over and starting with that little nip here. I'm gonna bring this over. And from here, I'm actually gonna go past it, tiny bit of a lip, and then just follow your guideline down. And we're going to just, for funsies sake, we're gonna make a grip that looks kind of like this. So from here, go ahead and square off, follow your square, and then your grip is basically complete. So from here, um, I'm just gonna have you guys follow fairly closely the bottom of this trigger guard and we're going to follow that over. Remember the top of these 
it's only going to be uh, flat around the very top. Now remember, guidelines are only guidelines. If you see something that doesn't look quite right within your guidelines, then you can most definitely kind of go outside that and uh, just kind of get creative. Like if this looks too tall or too square to you, feel free to make it a little bit longer. And that's what I am doing here. I'm just kind of going outside the guideline um, this way, just a tad to kind of balance that out. Um, anyway, so from here we have our receiver, um, top receiver line that needs to be drawn in. So I'm just going to follow that line that we already made. And then that is our top receiver line. So from here, we're getting pretty close to understanding what this is looking like. So come over here, boom. This is our safety from uh, the non-dominant shooting side. This is our safety. So we'll use that. Um, that's kind of a guide for later when we do our bolt assist. Right now, I'm actually going to draw straight across here. I'm going to make a dot, and then we're going to draw a rectangle around it, just like this. And that is our um, safety release, or excuse me, our uh, um, magazine release right here. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to come to this side, bring that straight across. And then following this guideline down, I'm going to follow this guideline just like that. And then from there, boom, and outlining that. So this, this is starting to look really nice, I think. Um, we're going to go ahead and put our trigger pins in. Now you can connect these with a the bar or you can leave them like that. I think I'm going to leave them like that for now. I think that looks kind of nice. Um, and for the trigger, we're just going to go ahead and follow this wall. Try to be exact as you can. This is the back side of the trigger. Follow the wall, round it off, and just sort of taper it. I think that looks decent as a trigger. So we'll come straight up. And that is the front side of our receiver. So from over here, I'm going to go start on the bolt assist. And starting back there, we're making those marks. Remember, your bolt assist comes to about over here. So boom, boom, and that's fairly simple for your bolt assist, right? Um, now we can actually finish that receiver up here. So um, from there, we're going to go ahead and start with our dust cover. And we're going to start from this point where the uh, this tubing meets the pin. We're going to come straight up from there just a little ways come straight across and then up at just a tiny bit of a slant boom now the other day i did a version where there wasn't some detail in here so i'm going to add a little extra detail what we're going to do is we're going to come we're going to add two of these marks and then make it kind of look like a spring just like that and with that we're going to add these markings here that are a little bit more standard to your M4 look. From here, go ahead and take this corner, bring it up, give it a little bit of a notch, straight over on the bottom, and then we're gonna bring it down, and that is our brass deflector. So we're starting to look pretty good. I mean, looking pretty clean in my opinion. Um, of course, I'm drawing it, so I hope I think it either looks terrible, it looks decent, so. <laughs> Um, we're going to come over here and we're going to add our um, bolt tube. I'll call it the bolt tube because that's where the bolt has room to slide. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring it up. Keep that line going. It's running right across my guideline there at the top. Um, and that's making room for our rails. So bringing this over and down. Now we're getting very close to finishing this up. So. We're going to run our charging handle right here, straight across the top like this, and I'm not going to do an optic right now. I'll do an optic later, but we'll come over across like this. That is a rear sight, which I like to add, just a very basic looking rear sight. Now for your top rail, I'm just going to do something that looks like that. 
If you need to use a guideline to practice that or put a rule across the top, feel free to do so. I've done these a lot, so I don't feel like I need it, but uh, there you go. Back here, I'm actually gonna come and I'm gonna consider this part of the receiver and draw my castle nut because for some reason it just doesn't feel right if I don't do that. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the magazine and I gotta get my pencil back out for this. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start and you're gonna just kinda draw this guideline straight down in here and I wanna adjust in the inside. And like I said, it's a gentle, gentle curve coming out because it's not gonna be like super wanky or wild. Um, we're gonna do it nice and square, best you can. Bring that over. And now do a center. And from here, you're actually gonna have, you're gonna want um, one, two, three, four. So you're gonna want four square spaces on the inside. And the first one comes, it's butts right up against the receiver here. So, open this back up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come square that off just like that and just begin to kind of trace around this. This takes a little bit of practice if you're not used to it, but if you've got skill, it should not be no problem. Um, and if it is a problem, then all it takes is just a little bit of practice lining up these things. So, coming down and meeting that, and then this bottom one, boom, from here, we're just gonna connect those guidelines all the way down. And that is your magazine, or possibly extended magazine, because it looks pretty long. From here, I'm actually just gonna add this, because that looks like a flared magwell, and I really like that design. That's your basic AR-15 receiver, and of course you'll be following this out and uh, doing some rail stuff later. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the stock and then the rails of this in the next two weeks.